A week from today marks Equal Pay Day, a symbolic day when advocates say women's earnings finally catch up to what men earned the previous year. And this year it comes as Democrats in the House and Senate are ramping up pressure against their colleagues to pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. The measure puts the heat on companies by requiring them to demonstrate that any wage gaps between men and women doing the same job have some type of business justification and are truly a result of factors other than gender. It comes as new data shows that last year's weekly earnings for women represented 82 percent of what their male counterparts made. And this afternoon, Senate Democrats are holding a hearing to investigate why the Paycheck Fairness Act has stalled. And joining me now, Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, one of the lawmakers leading the charge on this measure. Senator, thank you so much for your time. Glad to be with you. So just in your state alone, in Wisconsin, um, the ratio that we're looking at is stunning, and it's even worse than the national numbers. Uh, women in Wisconsin make $36,535 compared to men who make $46,898. Uh, that means that for men, they represent an earnings ratio of 78%, meaning that women in Wisconsin made 78% of what men in the state were making. And Wisconsin's Equal Pay Act was repealed by Governor Walker in 2012. Why do you believe this conversation cannot move forward? Well, I certainly hope this conversation does move forward and that we in the, at the Senate uh, pass the Paycheck Fairness Act. I think it's critical because it's not only about the women involved who fall behind at 78 cents per every dollar that a man makes, but it's their families. And over a lifetime, over a career, if women face pay inequities, it can mean the loss of tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars that affect their ability to care for their children, to save for their kids' college education, to have a secure retirement. So this is actually an economic issue that affects everyone, but certainly as long as we allow pay uh, inequities to persist, we will not have uh, an economy that provides a fair shot for everyone. To your point, in Wisconsin, 229,000 plus households in the state are headed by women. Yes. And in this case, we're talking women who are caring for or are bringing in the significant income for their children, maybe their spouses or significant others as well here. But I got to get your thoughts. Uh, there's a quote from the Washington Post. The headline was GOP women in midterm races say Obamacare trumps equal pay. And a Republican pollster, Kellyanne Conway, was quoted as saying, Republicans recognize that this is also the Democratic Party's latest attempt to cry squirrel. So women in this country who control two out of every three health care dollars that are spent are disproportionately health care consumers and providers providers divert their attention from the unspooling of Obamacare, basically saying that you can't focus on both here. Well, certainly we can focus on both, and we must. And the Affordable Care Act is also very important in this discussion because women, prior to the passage of the Affordable Care Act, paid far more in premiums than men did. Uh, their gender was considered a pre-existing uh, condition. Pregnancy often disqualified people for uh, coverage. Uh, all sorts of things were held against women. So if you think about it, you, on one hand, you're getting paid less. Mm. On the other hand, you have to pay more for your premiums. Right. And so this is actually a very important discussion, and I'll engage uh, the GOP on why the Affordable Care Act and Obamacare is so important to help women uh, at the same time as we battle for minimum wage, for uh, extension of emergency unemployment and for pay equity, for the Paycheck Fairness Act, because it's about our economics and helping families get forward. But Senator, you well know the major opposition from Republicans is that it would encourage lawsuits and cripple the ability for private businesses to set their own pay scales based on merit. Um, what kind of traction are you getting as far as support from your colleagues across the aisle? Well, let me first uh, respond to the criticism you just uh, raised because you noted in the opening that Wisconsin had recently repealed mm -hmm. its Paycheck Fairness Act. It had only been enacted about three years prior to its repeal, but there was no litigation uh, that they could point to. They were talking about the threat of future litigation. You know, this is ridiculous. You have to be able to have evidence for such arguments. Right. And I think that women need the tools when there is pay 
inequity and it is uh, rooted in gender discrimination, that they need the legal tools to fight for justice, fight for fairness, a fair shot for everyone. Senator Bowling, thank you so much for your time. It's a great pleasure having you on News thank Nation you. today. Thank you. Coming